Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover downloading the Camp Studio Lossless Codec uh, version 1.5. Right now, we're using the Camp Studio Lossless Codec 1.4, um, but we're going to go ahead and get the 1.5 version by heading over to campstudio.org and scrolling down to where the downloads are, and you'll see there's now a Camp Studio 2.6 beta. Now, even if you're not an expert, it doesn't mean you have to actually use this thing. They don't recommend using it for, for production purposes yet. But you do get the new lossless codec, which is definitely ready for prime time. So clicking on that link takes you to SourceForge. And what you do is you scroll down a little ways. You know, this is not the link. This is the original 2.0 version, which is good and stable. Well, if you scroll down a bit, you'll see Cam Studio 2.6 beta. It's here and here in the same file. And uh, that's the one you want. So when you click on it, it will take you to the download page and allow you to save it. So let's go ahead and do that. And it starts slowly. There we go. So save file. And it's a pretty quick download. Okay, so in my downloads folder, there it is now. So go ahead and double click, hit run. Got a nice new installer. Accept the agreement, click next, click next. And see, here's where it installs your cam codec 1.5. And uh, full or custom, it's going to suggest installing that. And we'll call this, rather than um, that, we'll call it 2.6. Beta 264, I believe that's what they call it. Was that the number? Let's see. Yes, R264. So uh, that way we know exactly which version we've got in that, that particular thing. Okay, so notice it already does this. In fact, I'll call this... Uh, also R264, since that's the revision it is. Since these are just living in folders, it doesn't install stuff in your Windows directory, so you're good to go. We'll create a desktop icon and hit install. Now you have it available to play with and try to find bugs. Now you would restart the computer um, so that it can register the dynamic link libraries and whatnot, but we'll just restart later since we're not actually using the program right now. Okay, now if I start up another instance of the recorder and uh, take a look at what I have in terms of my video options, you'll see nothing has changed because I haven't restarted yet. So that's what I mean, it's got to register the new codec in the system. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, come right back after we've restarted and record part two of this section. And then we'll download the DivX codec in that video as well. 